So when I meet great faithful Catholics who are concerned about how to evangelize but not quite sure how to do that, I always like to tell the story that most Catholics know at least the first half of, and that's the story of St. Monica and St. Augustine. Augustine is away from the Lord, Monica wants him to come to the Lord, and Augustine is lost in sin. And Monica's methodology, as he articulates later in his life in, his, in the book, The Confessions, he talks about Monica in four aspects that I think we all need to be well-versed in when loved ones are away from the faith. Monica prayed, and she cried, and she fasted, and she gave alms. And I think this is the first part of the recipe. And so for those of us who have broken hearts, it's good for us to be praying and fasting and crying and giving alms. But Monica never leads Augustine back to the faith. That actually comes uh, the second half of the story, which is St. Ambrose, who's the Archbishop of Milan, is actually the greatest speaker and teacher in all of Europe. Augustine wants to be. Augustine doesn't have faith, but he wants to be like Ambrose in the sense of his great teaching and speaking. Ambrose takes him under his wing and begins to mentor him and invest in him. And as he does, he shares the faith with him and leads Augustine to faith in Christ. And so my issue is, as we're trying to answer that question, I think we have to be ready to play both parts. We need to pray and fast and cry and give alms. And we need to learn our faith as well as we can and become excellent at certain aspects, which is gonna take a lifetime. But grow in that knowledge so that whether God calls us to be a Monica, or an Ambrose, we're ready. Now, I think there's a misunderstanding about evangelization when we think it's a work of experts. You know, the Father Mike Schmitz, the Ted Sreeves, the Tim Grays, whoever it might be, and to recognize they're kind of like celebrity chefs. I'm, I'm glad they're there, they're entertaining, they can be informative, they're inspirational, but everybody has to cook. And so we have to understand that celebrity chefs have their role to play, and, and we should be very grateful for them. But to think they're gonna cook for us is crazy. Uh, that just doesn't happen. And so we have to recognize this is the work for everybody. And the real issue is not the knowledge base. That's very important, but far more important than the knowledge base. And Father Mike and the others have a great knowledge base. The question is, do we experience our Catholic faith as good news? When we experience life with Christ, our Catholic faith is good news, evangelization comes naturally, the same way that we would share good news about a restaurant we just found. Uh, we don't need to go to a class on how to share information about a good restaurant. You just share that news with our friends. The question is, are we experiencing our Catholic faith, our relationship with Jesus Christ as good news, or it's just a set of burdens and regulations, all of which may be true, but they're not the truth about life in Christ. I think people want to articulate that faith is a private matter, and I would say that's, that's close, but actually misses the point. It's a personal matter, but not a private matter. Our Lord himself said, let your good works shine before people so they can see them and glorify God. And we have to recognize that included in those good works, yes, we should care for the poor. Yes, we should be nice to those who are nice to us and those who aren't nice to us. All those good works are important, but one work that we also do is we speak. And when we speak, we want to be able to articulate the gospel. How great is it to be a Christian? and to be able to share that good news. And so to say that faith is private is crazy. Imagine if Jesus had that attitude. He would never have taken flesh. Imagine if the apostles had had that attitude. There would be no Catholic Church. The reality of the matter is we're supposed to articulate this. But the point is we never want to force people. We should stand in front of people and invite them rather than stand behind them and shove them. We're not here to shove. We're here to encourage and invite, to render the faith attractive so that they'll come. We should be doing that all the time.